been a while, it feels like. I don't know why. It hasn't actually, because it's it, been less than two weeks, which is what we usually do. But it does feel like those two weeks have been so long. Right? So it's not just me. Okay, good. January does feel like it's been going on forever. <laughs> it kind of does. It's very annoying. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> but uh, we're back. Hello. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to talk about stuff which uh, Katie brought to the table today. I did. did. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to just hand it over to Katie. Introducing oh, I, the podcast I, and we, I mean, it, I don't, I think, we, oh yes, that, that bit first. Yes, yes. Um, I'll do that bit first. And then yes. I thought we were going to go on to our other usual bit. Yes. yes we yes. haven't done that in a while. Okay. Yes. Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome to all the bills we judge before. I'm Katie. That's Lily Kay. Bam. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> What did you watch in the past mm. few weeks? Uh, wow, wow. Um, what did we? I can't remember the last thing we spoke about on the podcast. It was in December, so don't it was in me. December. <laughs> okay. Well, since December, I did watch all of Bridgerton. This show infuriates me because there's like there's little bits of it that actually I really like, and then there's a whole bunch of it that I am just entirely detest. But it does make it fun for me to talk about in that way because it's just sort of like there's so much shit here, and there's so much like stuff that I find fun. I like the second season more than the first. I think Daphne and Simon are just, I, I hate them. I don't think you're the only one, to be fair. I don't like them either. <laughs> and it's just, I find it so bizarre because the, the impression I got from the internet is that I thought people really fucking love this show, which I guess they do. And I, But I guess in my mind, I equated that to it being good. It's not. <laughs> Miss Daphne Bridgerton. When I was describing it to a couple of people in a Discord server I'm in, it was described as like proper like bodice ripper, which is like an old term for like old romance novels where it's just about like, oh, look, there's it, it's like that. They're vaguely, you know, at a Jane Austen stuff, but like they take out any of the real heart from it and they just make it about sex. Pardon me. Forgive me. Which obviously it's not just that they, not they just have, that. I, I, and I did praise the fact that the end of the second season actually managed to really. Mm -hmm really get me because yeah. um and it helps that um final fantasy 14 Jonathan Bailey is such a good actor I do think that Benedict is my favorite Bridgerton brother and I need yes. him to be bisexual and that is important to me um and the fact that they didn't do that in the first season when they had set it up uh annoys me deeply <laughs> <laughs> it there's annoys still, me deeply there's still a lot more to come on that yeah there so. is please he he just he should be bisexual. It's like it's right there in my perfect world. Benedict would be bisexual and Eloise would be a lesbian. And that would just be perfect for me. On the other hand, now we've got the new year in and uh the first three episodes of Life and Vox Market are dropped, and I've been going fucking bonkers about it for the past few days. It's <laughs> you true. go through my Twitter, it's just me tweeting about it. Oh, that's a new record. Usually it takes us 10 minutes to get kicked out of a palace. I'm fine, totally normal. Nothing weird going on here. Definitely don't have lots of me screaming on my Tumblr as well. It, it's so gratifying and wonderful because it's it's genuinely fucking excellent. But at the same time, I'm in pain, emotionally speaking. The more interesting thing is I've started watching Six Feet Under. Yes, I saw your tweet. Oh, I yeah, love I got, that series. I got the box set for Christmas because it's one of those ones that people talk about all the time. Um, um, I like it. I've only watched two and a half episodes so far. Mm. Mm. Um. The first episode was a lot more. I didn't realize just how surreal the whole thing was. That they did a lot of like funny little dream sequences and you know weird sort of side piece. It's surreal. It's surreal. There's a lot of surrealism in it, but I like that. Um, I there's a couple of people in it that I wasn't expecting. The guy, the main guy Nate is in Nine One One, which I, <laughs> which my mum watches. And I'm like, hey, it's fucking Bobby. She's like, yeah, he's like the guy in the series that's about. I'm like, I didn't know that. <laughs> but yeah, that's my plan to kind of dig into that slowly over the next couple of. I don't really know all that much about it, other than you know it's about death, it and um, that the series finale is considered one of the best episodes of television ever. So I guess we'll see. You see, it's it's a good one. It's a, it, you you have to stick with it because it's mm. uh, you know. It's taking its time. I That's think, fine know. with me. I don't mind that at all. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't think there's anything else, though. You didn't watch anything else? Well, I mean, I watched the first episode of The Last of Us, but, like, that's... We kind of been over that already a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I great. Did. We all know it this. Is. It's very good. It's very good. Also, 
listen to our other podcast oh yes we has <laughs> got rest. another podcast called the rest of us it's on couch soup you should go listen to it thank you <laughs> yes please i i found the first uh korean series that i don't like it pissed wow. me off so fucking much i'm not gonna lie <laughs> it's called nevertheless and uh it started off okay and then it just got really bad like i was i hated the main character so much <laughs> like constantly making the first decisions getting together to the obvious red flag guy at the end and i was like Ugh, no uh when there was like an absolute sweetheart right right there like right there and everyone else was just more interesting than the main characters <laughs> Mm. Like, so I, I literally I watched the last three episodes uh, skipping through their parts and just watching <laughs> uh, like the side characters doing their things and that was more interesting than what we got in the main part so I was not happy with it at all which is a very first for me I watched The Menu which was brilliant oh, I still need to fucking watch that it <laughs> it's is, on Disney Plus I know I just haven't gotten around to it. It's, it it is honestly so fucking good and I I am now regretting not watching it in the cinema I'm I had the thought to do it and then I it, it was one of those ones that sort of ah look I, I, I was busy <laughs> I, I I wasn't that busy at that time but I literally texted my friend who works at the cinema uh and I was like is the crowd I think that's going to watch this movie at this movie and she was like yes meaning the assholes the I ones see that you know talk during the film yeah. and being loud and awful so I was like I'm not in the mood <laughs> to deal with that. Ginny and Georgia season two uh, came out. I need them to make a season three because otherwise I will go and kick everyone in the butt <laughs> because they left it at a cliffhanger. Um, I, I had to tell you this, Netflix need to kick up the ass anyway. Uh, yeah, well, obviously, but uh, that's the obvious thing. But but like with this, it, it needs a season three, like very, very seriously needs a season three. They left it at a cliffhanger that is just criminal. It's It's so bad, I was like, excuse me <laughs> that's the end of the season it's it was very good i i really enjoyed it it's it, sometimes it's a bit trashy and it's you know it's like the characters are no longer morally great they just awful at some point <laughs> but i just love it and and it talks about very important things uh which in, includes and um, you know warning and everything but it includes like self-harm and everything so um and i i like i like that they they care about those stuff and they won't just put it under the rug so it's like a constant thing in season two uh, as it was in season one by the way and depression and all that so well done i i really enjoyed it we watched the play pale blue eye uh which is the new christian bale uh, movie i think i've read that that was a bit nap it wasn't anything huge. Uh, yeah. I was bored most, <laughs> during the most part, but then the end got me back and I, I actually have to say it's it's a good movie with that <laughs> ending. Uh, I was like, ooh. I do like it when an ending kind of saves, a bit. not even necessarily saves a piece, but like just brings yeah. the whole piece together. Yes, yes. that It definitely did that here. I watched Puss in Boots, uh, The Last Wish. Which That's is... still not out here. I was wondering about it because people kept talking about it and I was like, oh, I haven't really seen it in anything. Just because it's not out. It's not out oh, until February God. here. <laughs> oh, that's very weird. Like, it's been out since December here, but I only just now got around to watching. Uh, and it's fucking brilliant. Like, it, the animation, the story. That's correct. <laughs> Uh, I think that's correct because Elliot said the same thing. So yeah. I, I think you're you're correct on that. Uh, everything was so good in it. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I finally okay. watched 13 Lives, which is up on Amazon Prime if you want to watch it. It's about the uh, Malaysia. I think it, it happened in Malaysia the, uh, when the um, 12 boys and their coach get stuck. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. We it's call it this doesn't have the house going viral in it, Colin doesn't it? Yeah, 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 it was yeah. one of the ones that came out last year that like I was like, wait, what do you mean there was another movie that had Colin Farrell in it? This had like absolutely no press. No, nothing <laughs> at all. But it's it's a very good movie. It's very factual. It was uh, directed by uh, Ron Howard. Uh, and it's like, you know, it's very on the point. Uh, but it's it's very good. Very good. It's it, it was really good. And then I last night, that's the last thing I promise. <laughs> watch so many things i rewatched sweet home because season two is coming this year so i'm very happy about that uh and i watched uh, uh and i'm watching black sales 
before Katie has me. <laughs> I'm back. Did you watch any more? Yes, I am at season two now. So whereabouts? I, uh, just the first episode. Okay. Uh, because I'm not gonna lie, the end of season one pissed me off really it's, badly. It's, I mean, yes, it's awful, but like there it's, are re- there are reasons for everything that happens in this show. It was it was so awful. I was like, I'm, I'm not watching this. <laughs> No, 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 you gotta, because it's like, you, you fucking hate the guy, and then you get part way through season two, and it's like, uh, I, because I found him, I was so, I was so mad, um, it's, and it's I did not him. like him for no. a long time, no. um, but they, 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 they you, you get one back, he wins you back, which is wild. <laughs> we'll see about that, I'm very salty still about it, and I was like, hmm. You need to text uh, me once you finish episode five. Okay. I will. The director of my favorite movie, Train to Busan, came out with a new movie. Uh, San Colion uh, directed Zhang Yi, which is now out on Netflix. Uh, it was a bit, eh? It looked, <laughs> it looked beautiful. I will like everything. The CGI and everything was like spot on. But I think there was so much more in this story, and I think they kind of missed that, in a way. I would still recommend watching it. It's literally like 90 minutes, so it's not like a two-hour movie. I think this movie would have benefited from a from a longer runtime. So Interesting. <laughs> it's very, very odd because sometimes I'm like, ah, I don't want to watch a two-hour movie. I'm like, uh, and then now with this one, I feel like it needed more time. On Friday, after this episode comes out, obviously. Yes. Um, there will be three new episodes of Legend of Vox Machina and a whole new episode of Actual Critical Role. So Friday, I'm going to go bonkers. <laughs> if you want any reactions to that, you can follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's, it's always here somewhere around us. So just really want to get into the stuff that I really feel about things. You can also follow me on Tumblr. My URL is, is that a calzone? <laughs> that was the one did we watch section. Watch. And I will give you... Yeah, me? Yes. Well, it's funny you were talking about terrible cliffhangers because that's kind of what we're a little yes. bit talking about today. Yeah. So this tweet uh, by a woman named Daniel Nikki went, oh, I guess a little bit viral. I don't know. It was going around Twitter the other day. And she, she I said, you get to talk to the creator of a TV show that was cancelled to find out what was, how it was supposed to end. What's the show? And uh, this makes me very excited because there's a number of things that got um, murked that I uh, desperately wish got an ending. Um, I tweeted basically all of my options, so I'm more interested in hearing about yours, but I will talk about mine just in more detail. <laughs> That's <laughs> fair. So do you want me to start then? I think I want you to start. So we get, and I, for me, I don't know if you, you were thinking about this in any way, but for me, mm. because one of the things I was getting a little annoyed about when I was reading through some of the replies were that there were a lot of people talking about shows that had endings like that had an opportunity to end admittedly they were like either prematurely ended or went on longer than they were supposed to lost was mentioned a lot which kind of annoyed me because that had an ending i know it, it went on ending. longer than it should have yeah but it had it, it did end yeah uh, that's <laughs> so weird. it's like those ones <laughs> game of thrones happened quite a lot which also really fucked me up because again it had an ending it, um it, it, the, it, the, it a lot sucked. of ones like this that kind of <laughs> yeah. came up and i was like i don't think that counts um, and I'm not counting them in my little list of things. I was going specifically for things that had been cancelled, so you never got to see how the thing was supposed to end. The first one is from Brad Wright and Robert C. Cooper, and it's my all-time favorite TV show, Stargate Universe. Uh, Stargate was Stargate's one of those ones that I really associate with my mum. Okay, <laughs> like she was big. She big into her st- we, we like growing up. We had Stargate box sets. It's just like not that necessarily that she watches it like all the time, but she does love Stargate. I know that. Mm-hmm. Like, and if I'll often, not often, I will come downstairs sometimes, and there'll be like, if they've, my parents have been scrolling through the channels, they will stop on Stargate every once in a while. I've watched all of the Stargate uh, shows. My favorite is Universe, and it was cancelled after two seasons, which to this day fucking annoys me so much. Was uh, there a cliffhanger? Yes, yes. So basically, they come up with this idea. Uh, at the end of uh, how they could escape an enemy that can detect life forms and whatnot, I mm. believe. Yes, I haven't rewatched it uh, last year, which is my ritual, and I didn't do it, so I'm a mm. bit foggy on it. Uh, but the main thing is that Eli, one of the main characters, is played by the brilliant David Blue, uh, decides that uh, he's going to be the one 
uh, who puts everyone in cryo sleep, and and the show ends with everyone in their little tubes sleeping, Eli standing on the bridge, and the destiny that was the name of the ship is just going into space. And I was like, that's it. Like, you know, we never got any answers of what happens to them afterwards or what's going on or why. I, I saw none official because I did my research and uh, back uh, in the day when it ended uh, with season two. And there was like these unreleased scripts of what season three potentially would have been like. Uh, but it's it later turned out that it was just a fan writing a script mm. for what season three uh, would have been like. Ooh, uh, the old internet days. There was this news going around that they're going to pick up Stargate again. And that they're going to like do like a whole universe around it, which is funny because Stargate universe. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I think it was Brad Wright who said that uh, uh, with that universe, finding an ending for universe is very possible. But it was like three years ago. And nothing happened yeah. since then. So I'm like, I'm a bit skeptical that we will ever get an answer of what happened to the crew of Destiny. And you know, it had it had actors like Robert Carlyle in it. Uh, he he played my favorite character, Doctor Rush. Louis Ferreira, who was uh, the other main character. So you know, and and I really liked it. I I genuinely think it it has so much potential to be a lot more. And I think the reason why uh, not many people uh, tuned in it's because in tone it was much darker than the previous Stargate shows, original Stargate, and then Stargate Atlantis. So yeah, it's such a shame. I wish, I wish, even if it's like one episode in the new Stargate universe, if they ever uh, got to do that, to just find out like what happened to the destiny. I will go on to, yes. off that then, I will go yeah. on to the, my, the one that came to me immediately. And okay. I have spoken about many times, I feel yes. like, but, um, and I wrote it in a tweet where I desperately needed to know I need to know it's been 10 years mm. how the hour was supposed to finish yeah. in its third fucking season because that agree. season two cliffhanger is so mean <laughs> you've got the entire second season kind of because the first season is a lot about like spies and espionage and all that sort of stuff it's very cool yeah and the second season goes into like underground crime oh like there was a there's a proper fucking time for it and i can't think about it um, it's like seedy parts of Soho and all of these like mob stuff and you know, all that sort of thing and corruption in the police force and all that sort of stuff. And uh, Freddie's following the story and the whole thing is b- building up to him basically throwing his life away as he gets beaten to shit by a mob boss who does, I think, eventually get arrested. I can't remember. He gets beaten to a pulp and then left on the grass in front of the film, stu- the TV studio where they filmed the show and he had just finally confessed his love to um, Belle. The last shot is him, like, like bruised to shit, half dead, just, like, calling out for the money penny. And I'm like, it's been 10 years. I'm still going into it, saying about it. And as far as I could tell, they were meant to get a season three, and BBC, the BBC basically went, eh, this isn't getting the views, goodbye. Um, yeah, yeah. And they shut it down, and I'm really mad about it. Um, Back in the day, I wrote my sort of an ending because I was like, I need this to be resolved. <laughs> There's been like, there was talk a little bit about how that was meant to go like into the 60s. And they were like, maybe they were going to cover like the moon landing and all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, which would have been really cool. <laughs> I want to see that. I don't know what the theme would have been for the season or anything like that. But I think a, a season that like kind of looked into because they wouldn't kill Freddy. Yeah. He says <laughs> intensely. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't kill Freddy. So I think a season that looked into like his psychological damage after that, yeah. <laughs> essentially. Whilst also exploring the relationship between him and Belle and that new effort. I was just I wanna see I would have wanted to see that so bad. My next one is Mr. David Fincher. Mm. Because how dare you? <laughs> it's, this is about Mindhunter, right? It is. <laughs> Mindhunter's never officially got cancelled. It never got ca- that's the it's, annoying it's part. kind of in limbo. It could come back. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, there's I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, uh. I'm doing a little but, thing. <laughs> but 
are you talking about? You don't know what is it. What about what about what about Bill's kid, who's is a fucking psychopath? <laughs> it seems like like what the fuck is going on there? What about you know uh I, what, what was uh, Holden's last uh, mission, uh, the serial killer. What what about that? Like you know, going after like someone who's still at large and 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 do his all this. It was um, it was B B T K, right? That was yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I I liked the second season a lot. I felt like it did more than it needed. To. It was it did so much and it almost like too much in that it didn't go into certain things. I'm still annoyed that they kind of dropped Holden's anxiety. By the end of the season, it like stopped being yeah. a thing, yeah. especially as that was the way the first day of the season ended, and it was so good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would have loved a second se- a third season of Mind Thunder. Yeah. But like that one, I I kind of squint my eyes a little bit just because I'm like, it's not really cancelled. It's just not. It's currently yes. doing anything. <laughs> but that's you know that's still that because the last episode came out in 2019. Mm. And still, like, you know, here's how we can still win. (laughs) uh, Sometimes there are like small snippets that maybe something's gonna happen and whatnot, but like, when is it gonna happen or are you just done with it? Because, like, we need to know. (laughs) I would be very annoyed if it'd be like, yeah, no, we're not gonna do it, which it seems that way. Mm. But at the same time, like, you know, there are still questions very much open there that, uh, hello. I want to see the answers for like come on I'm so annoyed with, because Mindhunter is brilliant if you haven't watched it yet please do so it's worth watch it's very it's, good it's very fucking good like I read the book and it's one of those cases where uh, the series is better than the book mm. you're expecting this maniac and he comes in very polite well the thing about it is and I think that's the reason why I still like really like it especially as it, with a sort of turn again my sort of internal turn I guess against a lot of like true crime stuff that has been made in the past yeah. is it doesn't really feel like true crime yeah it feels like a fictionalized version of something that is true Jonathan Groff is great oh. <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, I mean yes uh, but like literally one of the series where I'm like everyone is just so good like, it's true everybody is so good just spot on so I'm like I'm um, I, I need yes <laughs> we we need something to happen another one i put on this list was mm. prodigal son oh yeah, yeah yeah which i'm fucked off about <laughs> they just canceled so, that like last year or a couple years ago now i think oh. um it, it did two seasons i can't remember when the last season dropped it was like i think i think the second season was in not spell prodigal 2021 found episode date was in 2021 oh. it had such a fucking good premise. It was really fun. The cast were amazing. Mm. I loved Tom Payne and Michael Sheen in a room together is fucking magic. Um, Michael Sheen is always magic. Like magic right? Michael Sheen <laughs> is always magic, but like the two of them together, w- w- it was the di- it was so oh, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Phillips was incredible um, and wonderful, and um, Aurora. Uh, I can't remember how to say her fucking last name. She's the daughter of the guy that was in Lost. You have to check it because I have no idea. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Her, her dad is Harold Perrineau. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. She it was Danny, um, uh, and they just kissed in the last episode, which was wonderful, but that never got resolved. And <laughs> it ended. Spoilers. If you, you should watch Protocol Sun anyway, even though we're never getting a fucking ending to it. Uh, hmm. It ended with uh, his dad basically deciding he was going to kill him and Mal- Malcolm stabbing him in the gut. And that's where it ended. <laughs> oh, I would be so annoyed. <laughs> I'm going to fight Fox with my fist. <laughs> oh, that's so annoying. I it was him. just, it was so fun. And it was like, considering our main character was so tormented the entire time like the man had psychological issue on top of psychological issue just so much trauma laid into this boy Mm. he was like also fun he was you know he still had this lightness to him as a character he was very silly in places um one of my favorite goddamn my favorite episode is in the first season um where in he the there's like a bunch of crimes that that are like all themed around the, the Count of Monte Cristo, um, and it's just stupid fun. And I wish they had been able to do more stuff like that. Yeah, the second season really killed them. I think uh, a little bit just 
the plot was really good, but it they had to do it over the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Um, like big time over the pandemic, and it it like instead of getting in as many episodes as I think we wanted to, I think they only did thirteen for the second season, and we just never got enough. We would have been able to get into because the whole like set up around Malcolm and they, the thing they kept playing with is like, oh, Malcolm's the son of the serial killer. Clearly he's also going to be a serial killer because he's so good at like being into the mind of killers and like he's profiling and all that sort of stuff. Um, but my boy was just super traumatized and he would never hurt anybody. He's not a killer. The fact that he had to kill his dad, who was like the source of like all of his fucking pain and trauma, who probably wouldn't be dead. They wouldn't get rid of Michael Sheen. Um, yeah. They probably would lay him up for a while uh, yeah. and maybe suggest that he died and actually he didn't. Something along those lines, I'm not sure. But like that would have been a really interesting thing to explore. And I think also it's just one of the best representations, I guess, but like explorations of complex PTSD. Yeah. Not just like, you know, yeah, I say classic PTSD, but like the form of PTSD that we see in media quite a lot. Yeah, It's like, this is this, you know, his complex PTSD. It comes from like extended childhood trauma and all this sort of stuff. And it, it they, he, oh God, Tampane was just so good in it. <laughs> it's such a great character. I loved Malcolm desperately, even if he was a fucking idiot. <laughs> Affectionately, he's not even. He's not like he's stupid. He's just an idiot. I, I, it's, it's, it's two different things. You know what I mean? There was a big campaign to try and save it, but like, yeah, not enough. You know, it was never yeah. gonna. I wish, but no. Alas. And my last one is is probably like, you know, it's I think it's very hard to find very good sitcoms. Mm. Uh and and just comedy in general on the TV show front. Uh, um and that's why I am still to this day incredibly, incredibly annoyed. Uh and I would like to talk with Victor Fresco, who is the creator. Uh, what would have happened in Santa Clarita Diane, which I mm, talked about yeah, that so one many did times. Come, that <laughs> came up a, a few times on this thread. I saw a few people talking about Santa Clarita Diet, um, which makes sense because, yeah, I, I understand entirely. It's like, again, so many open questions in season three. We finally started to understand what's going on, like, you know, how this whole thing started and whatnot. Because Drew Barrymore is actually like a zombie, like, you know, yeah. she's, she's like, you know... <laughs> She's like a very, very human, but also very zombie. Zombie, if that makes sense. Like you know, yeah. she can still talk, and she still loves her family, but she still wants to eat people. That's the thing, and it's very fucking funny. It's like I think it's one of my favorite roles from Timothy Oliphant. Who's <laughs> just great as uh, as Joel. That man just loves his wife. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's so, like, the funniest parts belong to him. She is dead and also undead. What the fuck? But the whole thing just worked so well. And, and it was it was really, really so funny. And I nearly didn't watch it because there's extreme vomiting in, like, literally in the first episode. <laughs> because oh, that's, right. that's how the whole zombie thing starts. And it's disgusting. And I was like, I did, I wasn't prepared that that's gonna happen, so I was mm. traumatized by it for like <laughs> a good two hours. I was like, ah. oh no, <laughs> I kind of hate this. And then I was like, okay, let's let's go back, let's let's you know stick with it. Maybe maybe it's not gonna happen again. Fun fact: I think it didn't. I think it only happens in the first episode and later on it's just mentioned or referred to when it happens to someone else. Um, but like, it was such a good show. And mm. I think there were a lot of fans who really liked it. Like, I, I think it was very popular. So it, when... it's, it's one of those ones that I hear a lot. Or yeah. it's, it's like, people are still annoyed about that one. It's, it's, sure. it's honestly, I just want more season. That's it. That's I think that's all we would have needed. Like just one more season, close it down, fun times. Because this way it's not closed down. There are many unanswered questions and, and new ones uh have been broke brought up uh, in the end. So I'm like, really? But I've got Graceland. Um I've spoken about this many times. I'm still mad about it. Um it, I'm the only concession I have is that it didn't end at the end of season two, because that would have been worse. Mm. That would have been so much worse. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. That would have been on the same level of the hour being cancelled kind of work. But this way around, at least we got to see Mike not dead. <laughs> um, but I wanted to see Briggs go to jail. Uh, I just I desperately wanted to see Briggs go to jail. He needed to go to jail. <laughs> he, he needed to be stopped because uh, he's a menace. <laughs> and every time Mike punched him in the face in the series... I cheered. Um, great character. I just hated his fucking guts, you know? <laughs> Fair. He to go to jail. Um, I felt very vindicated about this because Rachel Ziegler, who is yeah. our Maria, in, yeah. um, was tweeting about this the other day um, because obviously Pedro Pascal was in the first season and he was murdered by Briggs. <laughs> Mike had just gotten himself together. He'd gotten clean. He was kind of on the straight and narrow again. He was like right back in it and he was like, I am going to he was putting together a case file to get Briggs arrested. And then it ended. One more season. That's all I wanted. Like, I don't think it needed any more than that. I just wanted one more season. And Jake's had just run away with his girlfriend and a bunch of money that he'd, like, stolen. I think Briggs had actually stolen it. Briggs ruined a lot of people's lives. I miss Mike Warren desperately. Yeah. And I know a lot of people miss Johnny, who was a big fan favourite mm. um, before Manny went on to uh, The Good Girls. Good Girls, um, yeah. Good Girls? Yeah. Good, 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 good. I think it's The Good Girls. But yeah, that was, that's one of the big ones. It, literally in my tweet, I wrote, uh, it, in my little list, I wrote, Prodigal Son, and I went, ah, just because that's how I feel about it. And then Grayson, and in brackets, I wrote, send Briggs to jail. <laughs> These two are kind of in a very similar category as they, um, I watched them both when I was like, they both came out around 2008, 2009, 2010, that mm -hmm. kind of period. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember exactly, I think 2009, 2010 is actually sort of it. So I was like 12, 13. Okay. When I was starting to get into these sort of like, you know, period, the weekly crime drama shows. First one, and is the one that she, the person who wrote this tweet, said, was a show called Flash Forward. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still pissed about this. It's been well over a decade, but it was really good. High concept, like, one one day everybody like blacks out and has like visions of the future on the same, for, at the same point, in the, like the same point in the future. And it was all about like this like FBI task force that was trying to find out what happened. And it had Joseph Fiennes and mm -hmm. John Cho in it. And it was just, it was like a really great story. Really, really interesting. It had all this like excellent buildup. And then the, the last episode happened and they had another blackout, except they're all looking at different points in the future. And then they fucking canceled it after one season. One season. <laughs> so annoying. And it's still, it was so interesting. It's like, it was one of those, I think it just, it came out way before its time. Yeah. Like, if they made that today, that would pop off, right? Yeah. I remember watching it and, uh, and you know, when I found out that it's it's one of those shows that's cancelled, I was like, I, I can make a decision to stop <laughs> it now <laughs> before I really get into it. So I never watched it. I was like, I watched the first two episodes oh, it's and I was like, it was really good. And I, I have this instinct every once in a while to go back to it. It was on yeah. Disney plus for a while. They've taken it off again, which is very annoying, but um, it's just really good. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good. Mm -hmm. Then the other one that came up on this list quite a lot um, that it lives in the same sort of place was a, a show called the event um, came out 2010, mm -hmm. did one season as well. And mm -hmm. it was all about like, it was like an alien conspiracy thing. Okay. Um, and it was all building up to supposedly there was going to be this big event that nobody could really like define. That was like we didn't know what the event was going to be, but the whole thing was like like deeply again, high concept, like lots of stuff going on, big cast of characters. I think Jason Resher was in it. Um I forgot it was about aliens. <laughs> <laughs> until I looked it up again recently because yeah. I just thought it was like they were building up to some strange happening but that mm. makes sense it was like aliens and, and all that sort of stuff mm. but like it's just it was really really interesting and again one season cancelled at the end of it could have been something really fucking cool never got any answers for it well love for that I just I would like to dig into that again mm. that one isn't quite as annoying as Flash Forward because I think Flash Forward was technically speaking a better show yeah. but the event was really interesting I do mm. wish, just wish, we could have gotten more out of it. It just, the, the event and Flash Forward like, existed in a very specific time in like American television yeah. where it, you were getting things that were like lost and like 
they, they, yeah, they the were mystery kind the of mystery thing. things heroes was also big in that that sort of yeah. and 24 those kind of like really kind of really deeply interesting like mystery mm. things that went on for like you know your 22 episode seasons yeah um which they just don't make anymore which i find sad <laughs> but i have the last one i have is this one that's behind me and i'm i left it to last because it's like slightly different from the rest of them because the ending it had isn't terrible it's not really like a cliffhanger but it needed more season <laughs> and it's limitless the tv so oh yeah you talk about this this is limitless limitless was a great show it was really fun desperately fun the main character in brian was just he like in that way i feel like he didn't see all that often he was just a fun like genuinely good guy Mm -hmm. and they managed to play and make and put him in these situations where he had to do these like actively terrible things to the people he loved Mm -hmm. even though it like killed him to do so and that made such a great like character like internal conflict um plus it just was very silly um in places it, it, he was very he was a very wacky guy um and i think it, it, i have still haven't watched the movie but the series was so fucking fun it's a whole episode that he did like fully parodies ferris Bueller's day off like nice. they do the whole thing nice. um uh and the, it, it started getting kind of interesting at the end of the the first season I mean, the whole thing was already very interesting, but they started like developing things a bit more because, like, they they got all of, like his lies out of the way, and Rebecca had, a, who was like the female FBI agent kind of handler, they had a thing, you know, <laughs> as they do. So she kind of had a sense of like what he does on a regular basis, and how um, Bradley Cooper's character was kind of sitting at the top of everything, kind of pulling strings and all this sort of stuff. It was just really good, and I wish it had more. But it's not really one of those ones. That I'm like, oh, how would this have ended? Because it like it kind of. They managed to, I think they clearly understood that it was kind of going to be cancelled. I think there was like a mm. feeling of it. Mm-hmm. So they left it in a place that was like, that more would have been absolutely welcomed, but it's not like painful. Yeah. That it, it didn't get, yeah. I mean, it, it still sucks, but like yeah, it wasn't, yeah, yeah. it wasn't like, ah, like it yeah, is with yeah, so yeah, many yeah. of these other things. Um, I know what you mean. I seem to remember that Aaron Tveit and Brad, uh, Brandon J. McLaren Mm. like had gotten together at some point and filmed like a little tiny like post season three Gre- Graceland like short yeah, yeah and I don't think it's ever come to anything and I'm like where is it drop it I want to watch it <laughs> oh I can tell you one that they shoot the whole season and it never came out mm. and it pissed me off because I already talked about this if you remember Tremors is one yes. of my favorite movies and they shoot a whole fucking season with Kevin Bacon being back as well, uh, Valentine, uh, and and you know just going back to uh, uh, to the Kevin old Bacon. feeling of the whole uh, movie. Uh, and then they shoot the whole season. They release the trailer that was awesome, and then we never got the season out. No, not even one episode. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, it's just. It blows my mind that they it's literally happened. did everything. Yeah, it's like that, and that's happening so much at the moment, just because like there's so many shows have like gone through, uh, or so many companies have gone through like mergers and stuff, and there's like a lot of layoffs and stuff happening. They're taking tax breaks by just like at, r- retroactively cancelling stuff. Um, the, like obviously, one of us discovery is a huge was was the big one of last year. Mm. I think they've officially said, stated now that then that that's done and they're not yeah. that's not going to be moving forward anymore. They've 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 done all they need to. <laughs> um, I don't understand why it meant that they had to like take things off the surface, but like, uh, um, bonkers to me. Um, I did have a thought when you were mentioning that it last one before we wrap up the magicians. Oh yeah, because like. Not only did season five end terribly, uh, just that he, Elliot was so miserable. He they left him by himself, and they left yeah. him with Charleston, Charleston, yeah. Charlton. They left him just Charlton, and it's like that's not a consolation prize. I love Charlton, but like those two are not meant to be together. Let's be fucking real here. Um, <laughs> nope. Um, half of them were stuck on New Fillory. Nobody knows what that is. 
Julia and, and New Penny were going off to jump around the universe to see if they could find them. And just Elliot was left alone. And, like yeah. that was shit anyway. But also I would love to know what the plan was before they decided to kill Quentin off. Cause that was clearly a last minute decision. I'm yeah. still so mad. <laughs> We we have to interrogate Ricky. Maybe he knows something. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know if he's going to tell us anything. I know. It. I know. But maybe you never know. I yeah. know. <laughs> uh, it's just it, it, that decision still boggles my mind. Um, it's because really... even if like even if Jason wanted to leave, why did they kill him? Like they could have let him leave. <laughs> I don't understand that mentality of like, mm, we got to get rid of this character. Death? That's yeah. I I don't I don't I never understand why they did that them. with um they did with Allison in Team Wolf. That never made any sense to me. Everybody else got to fucking leave, but they were like, no, we're gonna kill Allison. It's like why? <laughs> and you watch the episode, and you're like, this makes no sense. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but they had to. They were like, that's, no, no, we have to kill Allison. Yes, they, that's the reason. They they have to, so done. It's all done. Done now? Yeah. They've uh, got the movie coming out in oh like God. very soon. I'm pretty sure it's going to be really bad. Oh my God, I'm not going to watch it. I can't I can't get myself excited for it. Because everybody no. else in the thing seems really excited for it. Like the whole cast have been like posting about it constantly. And I'm just like, I can't, there's no styles. <laughs> There's no styles. I heard things about the, the shit they pulled to Arden show was horrific, exactly. and it was it was uh, apparently only Dylan who was like, mm -hmm. no. Uh, uh, so you know, respect Dylan. We love you. Uh, oh, we always did. Uh, but uh, you know, like that <laughs> that was already like mm -mm. that was big no for me. The trailer looks awful. Like just the, the concept cheapest... I'm really interested in, but again, it's like, why would you bring back this character without styles? <laughs> it it just looks like the cheapest B movie. I'm not gonna lie. It does, and I, I might download it and watch it for fun, but like, I'm probably no, I don't think I I will let you watch it. Then you can tell me how awful it was. <laughs> I watched a really fun video. Um uh charlotte sent to me about a guy who like basically talks through the entirety of team wolf and like the things that were great about it and the fact that like overall it was a bad show but then season three was just so good and everybody's just sort of like okay but i'm fond this is us talking about the cancer tv shows uh you know we just need one more season one more. One more. just a little uh, bit more just a little um, bit more. if you guys have any that you can think of i would love to hear them um very oh, much uh, put them in the comments or you can tweet at us both the things will be on the screen I'm sure uh, but yeah this was us we will be back uh, in two weeks uh, we'll obviously talk about and then in the west uh, oh is it, it comes the, is it that the, yeah it's it's that time yes we, we're gonna review another Marvel property and then we're gonna have uh, Mr. Jeffrey Pierce coming in hard at the end of the uh, at the end of February <laughs> coming in hard yeah yeah uh, <laughs> And uh, we're going to talk about The Last of Us with him, which is very fun. Um, until then, don't forget to subscribe, uh, leave a like, because that helps the algorithm stuff, which is... Rate us on various podcasting platforms. Yeah. And uh, comment. Let us know what cancer TV shows you're still salty about. We want to know. Uh, yeah. And we love you all. Goodbye. <laughs>